Welcome everybody to this webinar on diving the Saudi Arabian Red Sea. The talk basically is a distillation of my experience of two years diving in Saudi Arabia as I was working there. Um, what I'm trying to do is just relay kind of what's available, where are the key spots uh, and some of the logistics involved uh, of diving over there, which uh, can be kind of interesting. It's an interesting place to be. Um, so let's kick off. Um, Saudi is, uh, I would say, without doubt, has got some fantastic diving, surrounded on two sides by uh, one, the Arabian Gulf or the Persian Gulf on one side, and 1,800 kilometers of Red Sea coast on the other. Um, there's a few interesting developments which I'll come on to, which are going to happen in the future, but very recently, only through, I think, tail end of last year, you could start to get uh, tourist visas to, to Saudi. So if you're feeling adventurous and uh, you want to go, you can. Uh, certainly before, I think it was October last year, the only way of getting into Saudi was via a, um, a working visa sponsored by a company uh, in Kingdom. So let's have a look at, uh, at what we've got. So Saudi, you've got basically several UK airports do direct flights, um, primarily to either Riyadh, which is in the center, or Jeddah, um, which is on the west coast. Uh, Saudi itself, as I said, surrounded by Red Sea on one side, uh, the Arabian or Persian Gulf on the other, and then bordered by uh, United Arab Emirates, Oman, and some more interesting places like uh, Yemen, uh, Iraq, and others. Um, I think we didn't go into any of the hotter spots, but uh, over the course of two years, we've dived quite a lot of the Red Sea coast with the dive club that was over there that I was part of. Uh, we also did uh, Oman, uh, Dubai, the Mussandam Peninsula, uh, north end of uh, the UAE, as well as uh, Jordan, uh, Lebanon, and other places, and, it, and Egypt as well, to be fair. So there's a good bit to kind of compare to, but uh, I would say without shadow of a doubt, the, uh, the Saudi Red Sea is, is, uh, is fantastic. What you've got is, as I mentioned, uh, this 1800 uh, kilometers of coast, all the way up here in the Gulf of Aqaba, uh, very close in that with, 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 you know, you can actually see uh, the Egyptian coast. From Dahab, you can see across to a, a place called Meza on the Saudi coast. And of course, everybody, most everybody's familiar with Tiran Island on the end of uh, here, which actually is much closer to Saudi Arabia than it is to Egypt. And I'll come on to something interesting about that in a moment. What you've then got is, uh, and generally speaking, I would say, you've got down this coast, as you, the further south you go, generally speaking, the better it gets. Um, but you've got what is a huge amount of space with not a lot of, of, of diving done on it. Um, I would say that probably the hottest spot on the coast uh, in terms of volume of diving is, is done in Jeddah. Huge amount of expats there and it's very well set up, which I will cover shortly. But uh, you've also got a number of other options which we, we shall get onto. Uh, you've also got, within Saudi itself, two BZAC clubs. Um, the club that I uh, was part of in, in Riyadh, uh, which is probably the driest place on the planet. <laughs> uh, you, you've, you know, in the middle of the desert, at least 400 kilometers from the nearest sea at least, uh, but a club with uh, upwards of, of 90 members, very active uh, and diving in Riyadh, you've either got a choice of diving in uh, some interesting high altitude caves in Riyadh, which not many people are up for, or you jump on a plane and you've got a huge amount of choice. And if interestingly, Taif, which is down here near to uh, Jeddah and Mecca, there's a club down there called the Taif Titans. And again, both clubs would be quite open to con being contacted uh, and would happily give you the benefit of their experience in diving in Saudi and uh, likely would kind of support a trip if you wanted to run one. There's also a lot of other BZAC clubs knocking around. We've got them in Kuwait. Uh, we've got them in Bahrain. Uh, 
there is a club in Qatar, Abu Dhabi, Dubai, and the one over here is the one that's uh, the, the PDO. Uh, it's a it's a kind of company social club, for want of a better way of putting it, uh, in uh, Muscat. Uh, all of those places uh, are, are worth a look, but uh, I'm going to concentrate this on on diving in Saudi specifically. Um, so, what are the options you've got for diving around uh, Riyadh? Uh, what what I found uh, in Riyadh was the first thing I did was do a search diving in in Saudi diving in Riyadh and actually it'll pop this cave system or rather a huge hole in the ground with a bit of water in it. Uh, this is heat cave uh, and I won't concentrate on this particularly but uh, as keen as I was to dive it the dive club there had never dived it before so we decided to take them in for a, an excursion and a look and we put some uh, we put lines in it uh, we lined it out and we took some of our less experienced divers in for a nice shallow look around the cabin zone. We also explored this cave down to 60 meters and it still was still going. So uh, as you can imagine with no decompression facilities, a 200 meter climb out over these rocks and uh, you know, in incredibly hot surroundings, etc. We decided that was plenty of exploration and didn't, uh, didn't go any further than that. But uh, an interesting place and uh, it, it, it got us wet, to say the least. Uh, <laughs> uh, not only sweaty, given that it was 50 degrees carrying the kit down this 200 meter boulder slope, uh, but also was kind of an interesting place to be. The focus of this conversation though, is gonna be diving in the sea. And if we look at what else there is around Saudi, you can go and dive in uh, Bahrain. There's a 747 been sunk in Bahrain. Uh, in the Arabian Gulf, as we're supposed to call it, from a Saudi perspective. You can go to Jordan, Aqaba, which is a two-hour flight. Uh, we dive Beirut, and this is a dive. This is uh, the Souffleur, which is a, a submarine uh, superb dive, about 38 metres to the seabed. So there's lots and lots of diving to do. What I'm going to concentrate this conversation on, though, is, uh, is the Red Sea specifically. And uh, so what I'd like to do is cover off just exactly what we've got by way of options. So... There are three main areas that uh, at this point in time I'd recommend diving on, which have got kind of dive operations which can help you. Uh, Yanbu, which is about 300 kilometers north of Jeddah, uh, which is mainly boat diving. Uh, one of the things about Saudi is you have to have a, an organized trip. You have to have Coast Guard permission to dive. So shore diving isn't just a case of throwing your gear in a pickup truck and driving somewhere because you would likely uh, I mean it does happen but if you get the authorities turning up then uh, there's big problems will ensue the, where you do where most diving occurs I would say in, in Saudi is on is on shore diving in Jeddah there are at least three different uh, places you can go they're compound diving, which I'll come on to in, in the sense that they are closed members only communities, which you can pay your kind of weekend membership to, run by uh, hotels or clubs. And predominantly they are expat diving and the, there's people that dive every weekend. Uh, there's also boats diving out of Jeddah, which again, I'll cover in some more detail. Uh, and they get out away from the, from the, I mean, the house reef's nice, but I wouldn't say, I'd say absolutely not worth traveling to Saudi just to drive, dive on that. What you want to do if you do go to Saudi is dive on the boat trips, get out onto the remote areas which are very rarely dived, and you end up with pristine dive sites and an amazing wildlife. So uh, that would be my recommendation. Uh, Al Lith, which is again a, a kind of marina based boat operation, and what they normally do is, is the weekend in Saudi is from a Thursday. Thursday night so we drive from wherever or fly from wherever we are on a Thursday night we arrive at the marinas get on the boats and then Friday and Saturday are the diving days what they normally do is steam you know probably 50 60 100 kilometers from the port overnight and uh, then dive on Farazan Bank which uh, is is absolutely superb diving I would say that both Farazan Bank which is here and the Yanbu reefs offshore here are absolutely incredible, really teeming with life. Pristine reefs, probably only dived even with these dive boats twice a year. So you maybe got 
20 people diving these things twice a year uh, and as you can imagine there's this you know very very little boat traffic very very little diver traffic on these sites uh, and they are uh, amazing there's a lot more traffic around Jeddah um, and certainly the the house reef on most of those uh, residential compounds would, would I would say have seen a lot of diver traffic so I would I would say general generalization that the Jeddah house reefs you would rec you would recognize as heavily dived Egyptian uh, shore dives um, but certainly the Yambu and, and the Al Lith diving is much more like what I would describe as southern Red Sea liverboard level uh, from an Egyptian perspective. I mean just in terms of geography we've got Sudan uh, and you're coming down as far as sort of Eritrea, uh, you, you know, at this level down south of, of Saudi, you are south of Egypt. Um, uh, and, you know, you're, you're very much further south than even southern Red Sea liverboards in Egypt, in Egypt would get to. Some other options you've got then are, uh, for the future, Neom City. Uh, which you may or may not have heard of. This is a development, a huge development the Saudis are funding. 500 billion, and that's billion, not a million, uh, 400 kilometers of Red Sea coast turned into uh, basically a, a, a relatively westernized uh, fun park with hotels and all sorts of things. Sadly, they also proposed to put a land bridge across Tiran Island into Egypt uh, to join Egypt and Saudi uh, and they are anticipating that would have the same effect of drawing people across into Egypt for uh, less restrictive weekends away let's say than you might find in Saudi Arabia. Um, the other place that you'd see on this map is Farazan Island so we dive Farazan Bank which is uh, a bit further north. Farazan Island at this point in time is too close to Yemen to uh, be you know an allowable area to dive. It looks incredible it's a marine park uh, but without the protection of the Saudi Navy uh, it's highly recommended not to go that far south and that close to Yemen uh, given the tensions between uh, Yemen and uh, Saudi Arabia. I mean even at the moment there's missiles being fired from Yemen uh, and, and this the sort of uh, northwestern corner of Yemen is, is where all the tension is so uh, not a good place to go and I've not been there so uh, I can't really comment but certainly one for the future I think that one. Um, if we focus on Jeddah for a moment as I mentioned it's shore diving uh, predominantly the Sheraton Beach Club is is the recommended place. There's, there's three main ones, La Plage, Fowl and the Sheraton Beach Club. Our club used the Sheraton, uh, not to be confused with the Sheraton Jeddah, which is nowhere near the sea and is in the middle of the city. So if you go on the Sheraton website, the Beach Club isn't listed. It's a bit what you might describe as shabby chic. Um, but as I say, from, from our perspective, it was a great venue, uh, very, it's right on the sea. Um, it is predominantly expats. I think uh, the Sheraton oddly doesn't allow Saudis in, but that's predominantly because they do allow uh, shorts and beachwear and uh, bikinis, which obviously is not allowable uh, in, in front of in front of Saudis. So uh, it it's a uh, as I said, relatively shabby. It's not something that Sheraton advertise, but. Uh, it's very well sub. It's got its own dive centre on site. So they'll hire you no know, gear if you want it. We always used to use tank and weights from them, and I think you'd pay. I think the the rooms were in the region of a hundred pounds a night for the accommodation, and then you're paying about seven pounds for a cylinder and weights. So, uh, in the grand scheme of things, relatively cheap in Saudi terms. Of course, everywhere in Saudi is dry in the sense no alcohol and uh, Sheraton and all these other places in Jeddah are no exception. You can see the little video on the right uh, showing us 32 degree water and 30 meter viz. So what's not to like? We did all of our club training uh, at this particular venue and over the course of the last two years we trained probably in the region of 40 plus ocean divers and 10 sports divers. So great location. What we would uh, do I would say in terms of 
recommendation though is definitely go and do the boat diving it's a great it's a great venue as you can see you know you've got access straight into a, a short a small channel straight across the reef and you've got this reef running all the way along um you can dive you know two hours that way and two hours the other way and uh, still be seeing the same kind of, of of reef life um relatively heavily dived and you've got uh, the, the other two, La, La Plage and Fala, either side of this. So you've got lots and lots of diver traffic down here. Um, what, however, I would recommend is uh, the boat diving around Jeddah. I mean, if you're going to Saudi Arabia for a trip and you were, you were going to do uh, diving, this is, is, the, is the type of diving that you want to get on. These boats, as you can see, the, the, the topography, the reef structure off the coast if, in Saudi, is really quite amazing. They've got absolutely loads and loads of, of coral heads. The majority of what you see in, in, in this chart is not, is, are reefs that do not break the surface. Uh, so they're a pretty big hazard for shipping, which means there's quite a few shipwrecks on them, which is great. Um, but what you've got is, is relatively uh, less dived reefs than you'd certainly see in Egypt in normal circumstances. Uh, and lots and lots of dive sites to go at. We use an outfit called Desert Sea Divers. You can see their boat in the background it takes about 12 to 15 divers uh, and they'll spend a couple of hours steaming out to the dive sites depending on the weather and the wind. Um, and it, is, it costs about 60 pounds-ish a, a, a day for two dives, but these are day boats. Um, I'm not aware of any liverboard boats going out of Jeddah. It's uh, very well served by, by these companies, but they only do day boat diving. Uh, what would happen is that we'd arrive at that we'd still stay at the Sheraton and then uh, we'd all get loaded up on a pickup and uh, driven on the road at breakneck speeds, which is the Saudi way, uh, down to the marina and we'd all jump on the boat relieved we haven't been killed on the way. And then the same, same operation getting back to the, uh, to the compound. What happens, however, in, uh, and this is some of the problems which we'll come on to diving in Saudi, what you can see in this picture is the little building with the red light on the top is the Coast Guard station. So the Coast Guard, unlike in the UK where you would see them as, uh, let's say, uh, helpful and, and very favourable, the Coast Guard in Saudi are more like police and they're very bureaucratic. And as in this case, with the red light, it means the Red Sea is shut. I kid you not. So boats are not allowed to pass this point. Just past this Coast Guard station is the opening from the estuary into the into the main Red Sea, and all of the boats have to basically be launched up this little uh, waterway. And if the Coast Guard says no, then there is nothing doing. Um, there's no diving allowed anywhere. And it can be for many, many reasons. Over the two years I was there, I would say at least 30% of our boat trips were cancelled. So we got a full refund, but we got no diving and we all had to scurry back to the, uh, to the compounds and, and dive, uh, uh, doing shore dives. So although the Coast Guard are saying that this, the Red Sea is shut to boats, you can still normally dive, um, shore dive, unless there's sufficiently large waves to cause a problem. Um, just a, bit, a couple of more people who've in the lobby. So as I say, you've got to pass a security, a visa and passport check. Uh, not only do they shut the Red Sea, but if, if your paperwork isn't up to snuff, if for some reason the computer this week is showing your visa as, as not valid, even if you've got a paper version, they'll throw you off the boat. And I've seen several people thrown off the boat even to the extent where we had people with guests who were family who'd come over and were guests on their main visa. So you, you can, if you've got an Igama or a residency visa, you, you can bring people over and they, they are attached to your visa. And we had one occasion where this chap's son was allowed on the boat because he'd got a visitor visa but the person who was sponsoring him, for some reason, the computer system didn't recognize the number of his visa or it was having a headache. The computer said no, and they threw him off the boat and left his son on the boat. So uh, very, very odd, frankly, but uh, that's just the way of, of Saudi, unfortunately. Um, as I say, often shut, but if you're lucky enough to get out, uh, you're okay. Reasons for shutting it, 
any any wind that's over 13 meters per second and even if that's an offshore breeze which is making the sea flat as flat they'll still they've got a wind meter on top of the coast guard station they'll shut the red sea they're not very big on maritime people being in the coast guard and a fair few of them can't even swim i understand uh, so if they if it's over the you know the prescribed limit even if the sea is flat they will not let you go out and even if the forecast is for it to peak over that uh, they will not let you out if the prince wants to go out on his yacht then they will shut the red sea so he doesn't have anybody looking at what he's doing and there's quite often military maneuvers and as i said if the computer system just says no then that's it. Uh, they, the, the, the Red Sea is shut. Um, so it's, it's not a guarantee. And you might spend all this time and effort getting to Saudi and then uh, find that your boat isn't allowed to go out. So that, that is a big, big problem. And until they solve that, uh, whilst they've got tourist visas in place, the infrastructure and the bureaucracy in Saudi isn't really at a level yet where it, it, it makes sense to kind of spend a lot of money to go and do things. Uh, because you can't guarantee it will happen. The next one I was going to cover was was Yanbu. So Yanbu is absolutely fabulous. It's a three-hour drive north from Jeddah, although there is an airport, smaller airport. It's not one you can fly to from the UK, but you can fly from from Jeddah or from Riyadh into into Yanbu. Um, from geographically wise, it's about 150 kilometres south of Marsa Alam on the coast so Mars or Alam would be uh, probably about here and this is the Egyptian coast uh, or Sudanese coast so Yambu even though it's the northernmost liverboard destination in Saudi it's still very much southern Red Sea so you're getting that kind of pristine life uh, you know huge shoals of fish sharks the whole thing uh, even in the northernmost and it is a pretty fantastic place for a two-night two-day liverboard six or seven dives over a friday and a saturday which is the saudi weekend you're looking at about 350 pounds at the moment i'm not aware of anybody doing uh, regular scheduled seven-day liverboards in saudi but if you talk to the dive operators who i'll have some links to at the end of the presentation they i'm sure will schedule boats for you uh, best to talk to them early in the season because they schedule their their time in the area so they'll spend two weeks in this area uh twice a year and so you and that's two weekends uh in this area twice a year so very little diving is done at the moment i don't see yet any of the big companies like blue o2 venturing into saudi i think that's possibly to do with the bureaucracy but over time things may change so what we have here is a little bit of uh, a, a taster reasonably decent boat this is a 25 person boat and here we are on reefs we spent a weekend up in Yambu and we didn't see one other boat all weekend and these reefs are stunning I mean you know the the best life uh, variety of life uh, and you know clarity of sea it's, it's kind of what you expect from the Red Sea but these are really pretty pretty something this particular reef uh, is also houses a wreck the, the Iona which is uh, a wreck you can get inside of uh, and well, this was a club ar arranged trip but I wouldn't say that the dive guides here are fussy about check in your credentials so you have to be again mindful that you, you might be tempted to do things that are beyond your training they're not really going to challenge you on that we as a club obviously made sure that we followed these act safe diving practices but uh, you do see some very uh, dangerous things done but uh, as i say this this is really superb Superb reefs, superb colour, superb life. Uh, I, I was very impressed. And this is a little tender they take us to the wreck to save us a long swim. They didn't tell us on this occasion until after everybody had swum around and used half a tank get into the wreck. And we said, well, can't you take us around and we'll just drop in off the boat. Um, so not the most imaginative. And this is, this is the wreck 
sort of split in two down the middle and then you can get inside it uh absolutely fabulous and again you can see you're diving in shorts and a t-shirt um i think this was around july time last year water temperature is about 28 29 degrees So I'll just whiz on. It's it's to be fair, more of the same. You can see all of these videos on uh, my YouTube channel, or if you go to the East Cheshire website, there's links to videos from there, which will be on my channel. And this this was a particular highlight of this dive. We'd we'd gone down fairly deep, deeper than that, to see the sharks, and that we'd transpired they were right above us at about 25 meters, and we've been sat down at 45 meters for for ages waiting for them. But uh, again, you know, it's it's all the things you want to see. Absolutely amazing. So, so this is this is say you're down level with Eritrea here. Um, we're moving now on to Al Lith, which is the next site. So Al Lith <coughs> is further down the coast. You'll see where the road comes in to this little point is where the marina is. Um, we meet at that marina and then they steam south. So this is this is now we're talking 300 mile, 300 kilometers south of Jeddah now. So we finished our Yambu experience, different weekend obviously. We flew to Jeddah and we got a car this time and drove from Jeddah down here. And again, lots of the uh, expats who work in and around Jeddah will jump on these trips. They also do tech trips down here. Um, although you've got to be very careful because it's a long way to a decompression chamber. There is one in Jeddah, um, but it's a heck of a way on the boat uh, and do not expect to be rescued by the Coast Guard. If you rang the Coast Guard and tell, you, you tell them you've got a problem, instead of sending a helicopter and airlifting you to a, the nearest decompression chamber, they'd probably send a, a boat and some police to arrest you for whatever reason. So uh, you, you've got to make sure that your diving is, is sensible. And say, although you can do tech diving, um, you, you've got to be very self-sufficient and bring, you know, O2 and all the other stuff that you would need to support that and take your chances as, as regards transit time to a decompression chamber. I would estimate furthest out on this boat trip, you're probably at least eight hours away from, a, for, from being able to get to the decompression ch chamber if the worst were to happen. So that's a risk too far for me to, to consider doing major um, technical stuff. So again, same price, broadly speaking, and this is 350, assuming you hire the whole boat. So that would require, we ran club trips and we filled the boat with 20 people, which is why the price came down. So you can imagine that you're paying 7,000 pounds to charter the boat and splitting it across all the people that are going on it. Uh, at the moment, they don't really do split trips in the sense that you, you can't just buy a place. Uh, they would normally wait until the boat is full before they run a trip, so they're not really selling individual places. Uh, again, it's not—it's just not set up for that. What what tends to happen is that clubs or groups will 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 book each weekend themselves and and fill the boat themselves. We didn't have any trouble doing that on our trip, so uh, that wasn't too much of a problem. The other thing about driving three hours south of Jeddah is that you start seeing road signs for 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 Yemen. Uh, and bearing in mind all the missiles that are pointing from Yemen into uh, Saudi Arabia, we felt that going as far as Al Lith was probably about as far as we fancied going. As I say, once you get too close to the to the border, things start to get uh, hotter. <laughs> and the, the advice is from from the pe from the companies that we were working with that we we shouldn't venture any further south than that. They would uh, look not very favourably on on us taking that kind of trip. So this is Farazam Banks. So this is again, one of the trips which we ran with the uh, BZAC 1666 out of Riyadh. And again, another weekend of no other boats uh, at all uh, around us. Uh, another thing, if, if we had any issues with, with our boat, which in the, hist in the past they have had, they crashed it on a reef at one point and had to be they were very lucky they were able to get it off but you, you'd find it quite difficult to get uh, immediate help out here it's it's quite a long way from anywhere but the diving here i mean i personally felt that farazan bank was 
ever so slightly better than yambu but both are incredible huge shoals of fish pristine reefs you know whip corals which were you know several meters long indicating they haven't been disturbed gorgonian fans you know whole forests of them uh incredible incredible diving um and the, so the group we were diving with quite an experienced range but we were able to kind of do our own thing and just go where we wanted to go on on the reefs so if you can if you get the opportunity to go and this is a incredible shoal of these fish were whizzing around in circles around us and then they all disappeared and in came the reason they disappeared so you know and all of this which we've seen so far is all in this the same dive just amazing jacks and bait fish and thousands of fish everywhere you look so absolutely incredible uh, and amazing colors and visibility you know 30 plus meters and obviously we we get night dives as well uh, but uh, absolutely awesome diving as you would expect in the red sea to be fair so what's good about it well i think the kind of things that you see which you've already seen on the video you know seeing hammerheads to be fair i didn't see any whale sharks in the two years i was there but pretty well every kind of shark you can imagine um and you know shoals of fish incredibly you know sunfish all sorts of things i think the good things for me as you've seen from the videos hopefully they came across on on zoom okay really pristine dive sites um you know dived twice a year um the dive operators were all to a t really enthusiastic you know they themselves were diving these sites infrequently and so they were as enthusiastic as we were about seeing some of this stuff i would say as a kind of temper to that they weren't always the most experienced people and uh some of the boat handling left a little bit to be desired on occasions hence the boat being stuck on a reef and i wouldn't necessarily uh be overly happy about my chances of being rescued in the instance of a of a problem so we had to be self-sufficient as a club uh, and make sure that we had everything we needed and, we, and we, we managed our diving appropriately um as i say if you went certainly if you went as a small group you'd find yourself with lots of other people who uh might rate you might raise an eyebrow at uh, the, the the quality and level of diving and some of the risk taking that happens but uh, that's I guess for some people that's a plus they get left to their own devices we've it's always been good company uh, and in fact on these boat trips we have had Saudis come along so to be fair for me that was a that was a major bonus actually being able to you know spend time with some of some of the locals which you don't see in those compound uh, dive hotels um, meeting the you know the, the guys from either you find some people coming in from the gulf states uh, they're allowed into saudi uh, they, they've got a reciprocal agreement so you'd get gulf states divers coming across people from lebanon uh you know qatar not qatar to be fair bahrain particularly though those you know meeting up with those people and hearing the stories and, and hearing all about what they do is, is part and parcel of being in a, in a very different country for me it is somewhere that until the tourist visas came in you couldn't get into unless you were working there so it's a really interesting country such a completely different culture um and and well worth spending some time in uh, just just to kind of soak that up there are other things to see as well um i would say they're not really that well set up for tourism at the moment there are tour operators but they tend to be for for saudi families if you kind of do a google search of you know tour operator in 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 jeddah they they tend to be for the saudis and they're not yet that set up for for foreign visitors there are some amazing things to see so um madain salah or al hajir is uh, a bit like petra in jordan uh, incredible uh in the middle of the desert these carved tombs you know, absolutely amazing it's been shut for the best part of two years uh basically being prepped for tourism for tourism which makes it worse in my view it's putting fences around things and whatever a lot of the benefit of going to saudi before it gets too commercialized is seeing 
you know the the non uh, non prepared for tourist stuff so the hejaz railway which was uh, lawrence of arabia himself attacked this railway uh, back in the day i think it was uh, just around the 1900s when it was first built and it was a railway that ran from damascus with the intention of reaching all the way down to mecca uh, the Ottoman Empire built it. It only ever reached as far as Medina, which is about 200 kilometers away from, from uh, the desired destination in Mecca. But again, uh, interesting uh, to see the old locomotives and what's left of the railway. The Edge of the World, which is near Riyadh, which is this, is an incredible uh, limestone escarpment. And again, you'll see no, you go there and you see nobody. And there's also what they call the Empty Quarter, which is probably about a third of Saudi Arabia on the southern border with, with Yemen, where literally you can drive for eight hours and see nothing and nobody apart from sand and uh, the occasional camel. So uh, if that's your bag, there's the stuff to go and see. What's not so good about it? Well, I think we have to be fair that, as I mentioned, the Coast Guard, um, they see themselves as police. They're absolutely not there for rescue. And as I say, they, they hamper uh, free and easy uh, diving. And, I, and I, I would genuinely, if, if I was to consider arranging a trip, I'd really want to make sure that the trip operator was, was very well connected. Uh, it's, they call it WASTA, having the appropriate connections into the Coast Guard uh, and some assurances that they would have all of the paperwork checked before you even flew to Saudi. Because uh, if any of the paperwork isn't in order, they'll basically stop the boat, not allow the boat to travel or throw individuals off the boat. So if you were arranging, say, a week long liverboard, you'd really need to make sure that your dive operator was on, on their game and had got the Coast Guard covered off. I don't mean backhanders. I mean it generally is about connections and having the right uh, the right people and the right connections involved in in making sure they clear lines with them. The bureaucracy, and this is you know things like you arrive at the airport and and your visa that worked perfectly last week doesn't seem to work anymore. Things like that happen from time to time, and you you cannot have a reasoned discussion with a Saudi official. Um, what they say is the, is the final answer. Uh, they don't change their minds easily. If they've made a decision, that's it. You will, you will not twist their arm or persuade them or talk your way out of it. You, you, you will go wherever they tell you to go. So that is a challenge, I would suggest. As I mentioned, it isn't really well set up for diver rescue. Although boats will have oxygen on them, getting to a, you know, if there's an incident, you are managing that incident yourselves and uh, your dive operator is the person that's going to get you to wherever you need to be, whether it be a hospital or a, or a chamber or whatever. So it, you, know, you have to consider those things. So certainly I wouldn't recommend going doing anything uh, of, of a higher risk. Uh, it, it, doesn't, it does not uh, work well. And just interestingly, you're not allowed rebreathers or helium uh, in Saudi Arabia. They are barred. Um, so you are doing recreational diving predominantly. You are our twin sets uh, and you can find places that will supply helium at a relative expense. But uh, as I say, personally, I, I wouldn't be looking to do anything too tasty for fear of uh, an issue occurring. Independent travel. I did a fair, I did a fair bit of, you know, from Riyadh to airports travel on my own but I wouldn't recommend once you arrive somewhere going off or jumping in a hire car and just traveling unless you've got somebody who knows the area you can get yourself into quite a bit of trouble doing that if you're traveling to Jeddah and going to the you know jumping in a taxi and going to the Sheraton Beach Club that's not an issue uh, and I wouldn't I wouldn't take any uh, heed of the doom mongers who tell you that, you know, that Saudi is a dangerous place. Generally speaking, it's not, but you can get yourself into trouble quite quickly if, you, if, you, if you're not savvy to the way things work. For example, even if you've got a higher car with insurance, if you have an accident, it's your fault, irrespective of what happens. And the standard of driving in Saudi is amazing. Uh, there are literally motorways that come to a crossroads with no traffic lights in the middle of nowhere and people don't 
stop or look they just drive across on the basis that um inshallah god will god willing everything will work so you see some fairly uh spectacular accidents so as i say i wouldn't advise independent travel in saudi you need to go with a fix or with a with a recognized group it is going to be expensive and it's going to be more complicated than similar alternatives and i say similar alternatives a blue o2 liverboard in the southern red sea off egypt is an easy relaxing prospect by comparison to going to saudi so unless you've got an air you know a flair for for adventure um i personally think it's quite expensive the accommodation is pretty expensive for what you get uh, and it's not yet really set up for tourism if you're an independent traveler and you love an adventure then by all means you will certainly have one without a doubt um as far as i'm aware all the tour op all of the dive operators are based in country are incorporated in saudi arabia they're not bonded as we would understand it so you'd end up having to kind of make prepayment for boat bookings and things like that and if uh, things go amiss you could find yourself out of pocket so it's a risk um at the moment the scheduled trips as i mentioned are weekend friday saturday only although i'm quite sure if you had a chat with people like dream divers they would happily work something out for you at the appropriate cost so uh, that's kind of where things are as i say if you want those longer trips you could get them arranged as one offs but to be fair i, I never did that i never stuck with weekends uh, taking a dive was an expensive hobby when you're over there at the moment right now they are under lockdown like us in in covid that said they are opening diving uh, at the moment from 7 a.m till 2 p.m in jeddah um eastern region which is over by uh doha qatar and bahrain uh you you've got 7 a.m to 7 p.m diving over there but to be fair personally the diving over in the arabian gulf it's relatively shallow by comparison to the red sea it's relatively murky by comparison to the red sea and you don't get the same diversity of life and corals i mean it's it's a dive but it's by no nowhere near as nice as uh, as as the as the red sea coast from my perspective and as as it says at the bottom a permit to dive must be issued by the coast guard um so you're not going to be allowed uh, to dive just turn up and go the special arrangements on at the moment all of that said this was uh, diving last weekend so even given they've been you know two months off and the, the sea's been left to its own devices in one weekend the guys that went out on the first boat trip saw you know huge numbers of mantas they saw you know a, 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 an abundance of sharks and i think this is down to the fact that even and this is in jeddah just off uh, the jeddah boat trips which you know th this this kind of life don't normally see because it's dived so frequently but i think all of the uh, normal dive sites are now flourishing given that they've been left to their own devices uh, so something to whet our appetite uh, cutting to the chase i've kind of alluded to this already would i recommend it as a holiday probably not uh at the moment it's just too complicated uh, and too uh hit and miss if you're going to work there or you're offered the chance of working there i would say bite the hand off because you know you, you can go and spend every weekend as i did for two years uh, you know diving in the red sea or the arabian gulf and, and it you know it, it's easy diving uh, fantastic well worth doing um if you want an experience again i would say yes although you can go and find cheaper and more reliable places with similar levels of, of diving you know it, it's not going to be off the charts diving it's incredible it's fantastic but that said we do also dived in egypt over the last two years and even the well dived reefs in, in egypt are recovering at an incredible rate um if you want a tourist visa relatively straightforward to get 100 pounds just for the visa including the fees and that is non-refundable so even if you get there and then somebody tells you you're not allowed in you've paid your money you're not going to get a refund um flights from manchester or from london uh, edinburgh glasgow all over in the 500 800 pounds economy right now today 
uh, the, the flights are indirect and cost about two and a half thousand for an economy flight because none of the direct flights are running. But uh, when things return to normal, uh, you should be able to find an economy flight reasonably, you know, for a reasonable price. As I mentioned, accommodation is expensive. So to cut to the kind of final word, interesting as it is, right now, assuming we get back to normal post the COVID world, my recommendation is you can you can fly to Sharm. It's four hours away. You can get on a, a boat in Sharm, go and dive the Thistlegorm. You know, they are delighted to see you there. Accommodation is very cheap in Sharm, unlike in Saudi. And you'll find that dives like Shark, Yolanda, which are day boat dives from, from, uh, from Sharm, are incredible. I mean, I, I went and dived Tailender last year, you know, Shark and Yolanda, and saw incredible shoals of fish. You know, the reefs are recovering big, you know, with big fish as well. And just the volume of stuff was, was absolutely incredible. So I would say that's a, a really easy option to get in the Red Sea. If you're really keen, if you want to go to Saudi, I'd recommend the dive that operation that we used, Dream Divers. They've got three boats. Um, get on their website, uh, have a look. And if you talk to the guy that runs it, it's his Eric. It's owned by a Saudi prince. Eric's been in country working for him for probably 15 years. He is well connected with the Coast Guard uh, and they will try and fix things for you. Can't guarantee it will always be right, but uh, he's the man to go and talk to. So that is, in a nutshell, diving in Saudi Arabia, the pros and the cons. And uh, this is a little bit of uh, Saudi, not, not Saudi. This is a little bit of, of charm. This is diving on the Thistlegorm on a day boat, tail end of last year where no other boats were on the Thistlegorm at all other than us. So you had it entirely to yourself. And then diving after the Thistlegorm on, so Thistlegorm, everybody's seen this before. Diving on Shark and Yolanda, huge, you know, huge, this thing was massive, six feet across. And uh, just amazing shoals of fish. Lots and lots and lots of, of good stuff to see. So. And I think the reefs were not, you know, they looked like they'd recovered immensely from when I'd been there previously. Uh, so that would, be, that would be my recommendation. If you're looking for a cheap dip in the Red Sea, Saudi's not your thing. If you want an adventure and you want to take a chance and see something different, then by all means, talk to Dream Divers and they'll put you right. So that was it, guys. Uh, I'm happy to take any questions in the 10 minutes we've got left, if anybody's got any. Uh, so I've got a question, Kev. Uh, yes, Mark. Is does the Coast Guard out of Yambu and the Southern Place um, impose the same access system that the Jeddah Coast Guard does, or is it is it less uh, less keen? Um, it operates in much the same way. What happens is the, the 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 weekend boats that you get will go to the Coast Guard station early morning on on the kind of the first day, and they have to get clearance for all of the people on the boat. So that means your passports have to be handed in, your visas or ikamas, your residency visas, and they are all checked and they're checked against the computer. And if the Ministry of the Interior computer system for some reason has got a headache today about your visa, they will throw you off the boat. So I've had probably four or five trips. Um, to Yambu, where I would say three or four people were, were, were thrown off the boat. And similarly to Al Lith as well. What we started doing was sending all the paperwork in advance and insisting the dive operator walked it to, uh, to, that, uh, to, to that Coast Guard station before, in the week before, and make sure that they were going to let us on the boat before we even flew from Riyadh. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, thanks so much. No problem. Okay, I'm not sure if anybody's got any, uh, there's six things on the chat. Uh, yeah, no, is it, is a weekend feasible as a single diver if you were working out in near Jeddah? Yes, absolutely. Um, so if you got in touch with Desert Sea Divers at the marina in Jeddah, um, you can pre-book even a single slot on those day boats. I would think that you probably wouldn't be able to get a single slot on the weekend, full weekend boats, but you can do a, you know, two 
two day boat trips. So you go out there at sort of 7.30 in the morning, jump on the boat, go through the rigmarole of the hour, waiting for the Coast Guard, get out onto the reef and have some diving, do the same on the, on the Saturday as well. So yes, it is feasible. That was for a, a question that George asked. So thank you for that. Any other questions from anybody else? Okay, guys. Well, uh, thank you for your attention and uh, say happy to put people in touch with, uh, with, with the dive clubs over there. You can actually find them on the Find It tool on the BZAC website, Taif Titans in, in, uh, up near Jeddah or the High Altitude Divers uh, in Riyadh as, as Riyadh itself is 600 metres above sea level. So, uh, yeah, they'd be quite happy to give you a bit of insight or indeed just get in touch with me. Uh, you, you can contact me via the East Cheshire website if you need to. I'd be uh, very happy to give anybody a steer on, on where to go and what to do. Thanks very much then. I'll uh, call that a day. Thank you very much.